Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Melton here, and today it's my pleasure to introduce The Tower. If you've been following along with us for a little bit, you might remember back in 2018, I found what is now the top half of this sky blue rack mount cabinet on Craigslist in Kansas City, cleaned it up, attached a wooden base and casters, filled it up with the gear I had, and that's what I've been rolling with for the past couple of years. Fast forward to today, and I've accrued some new tools, including two really high quality units from Warm Audio, their version of the LA-2A optical compressor, and their version of the vintage Pultec EQ, and a bunch of other weird stuff, so I had to add more rack space. Plus, I'm six foot three, and the old setup didn't even come up to my waist. And when you're recording vocals, you're usually standing up, moving things around, twisting knobs. So moving this thing upward was long overdue. Plus, we were working on a new record. It was time to upgrade. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I built this thing, what gear is in it and why, and some other cool features. I live for this stuff. Functionality is always number one. Let's check this thing out. So I already had the top half of this thing. It's a pretty weird and cool rack cabinet. I have no idea what it was used for, but it wasn't music gear because the holes weren't quite in the right place. So I had to drill holes. My guess is perhaps some type of medical equipment. I don't know what it was, but if you have any guesses, feel free to drop a comment. And it's sky blue, how cool is that? So what I needed to build was a bottom cabinet for the top to be mounted down onto. So I decided to make the bottom cabinet the same amount of rack spaces as the top. This part of the project began in my garage workshop where I started by building a frame, basically the skeleton of the bottom half. Then I had to cut woods out for the sides, sanded it down, primed it and painted it. Then I attached the top half to the bottom half, attached the casters, and then I found these old speaker cabinet handles on eBay and cut out holes to install them into the upper half. And these come in handy when I have to move it around and they look awesome. Kind of adds a black leather jacket kind of thing. And I like that. So now with the tower cabinet assembled, the next step is to figure out what goes where for maximum functionality. This part was pretty tricky. I moved things around many times before settling upon up top, the Warm Audio WA-2A leveling amplifier, which is a high quality remake of the classic LA-2A optical compressor. Below that, the Warm Audio EQPWA, which I think is a really accurate replica of the vintage Poltec EQ. Dropped in a new 10 input circuit breaker so I can control what's on and what's off. Next, my favorite effect and totally indispensable the Boss DE200 Digital, Digital Delay. Delay. I use this on my vocals on the new Dream Machine album coming soon. Then an RCA patch bay saves me a few trips behind the back of the tower. A really cool bi-amp EQ that I use mostly as a high pass filter. A PV Univerb, which is actually a very cool reverb unit, underrated. Then my Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 audio interface, which is a great companion to the Tascam 388 to import all the tracks into individual tracks in your DAW. And it's right here, right at the right place. Got another patch bay. And from here on down, it starts to get a little more random. This Logitech audio rack is a really unusual six channel unit. And down here, a really weird nine channel XLR patch bay that I'm using to connect to the eight channels on the Task M388. Some power strips, an AEI music control panel that was actually used to control the volume levels of music music in a JC Penney's that went out of business in the 1990s. You can see that it has individual controls for different areas of the store. And last but not least, this weird thing, a WaveTech RF power meter. I paid a hundred bucks for it just to fill up the last rack spaces with a toy, essentially. Turn it on and there are different settings where it analyzes the chaos of the electricity you're using and cycles through purely random numbers forever. Just a cool thing to have in there because I like it and it reminds me that electricity 
is really weird. With the few rack spaces left at the very bottom, I threw in a storage cabinet for cables and other effects because it's right on the floor. You don't want any regular use components down low in such an inconvenient place. And some extra storage is only gonna keep me more organized and therefore more productive. And for the cherry on top, I covered up two unsightly holes with a custom metal Fuzz City sign. My studio has always been Fuzz City, so there you have it. What do you think of the tower? Hopefully checking out this bizarre yet functional contraption can inspire you to upgrade your setup. You can always buy prefabricated rack cabinets, but sometimes it's better to have things exactly the weird way that you want them that works for you. Thanks for checking out the tower. Have a productive day, and we'll see you on the next one.